In the last video, I finished construction of the adder for my Relay computer. That forms the first half of the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, inside the computer's central processing unit, the CPU. To finish the other half, I need to build circuits for computing logical functions of binary numbers, which are known as bitwise functions. Suppose I have two binary numbers. In computing, we often need to apply a logical function to each column of bits and look at the result. This is called a bitwise function because it operates independently on each bit of the numbers, instead of considering the entire number as a single truth value. Let's say we wanted to do a bitwise AND. To calculate that value, we start with the rightmost pair of bits and apply the AND function, writing the result below. This is the bitwise AND result. As you might remember, we can get this result using the AND gates I designed for use in the adder. The second pole on those relays was also used to create an XOR gate. I designed these two gates for the adder this way because I thought it was the easiest design to understand. But it turns out the AND gate design used in the adder presents a small problem. Here's why. I want my logic block to take two binary inputs, A and B, and compute six different functions simultaneously, AND, NAND, XOR, XNOR, OR, and NOT A, which is just all the bits of A flipped to their opposites. It's the OR which makes things difficult. Remember that to build an OR gate, we just have to wire two signals together. If either or both of them are turned on, the output will be on. But I can't do this with the inputs to my logic block. If I connect them together, then either A or B would trigger both input relays, which is wrong. To make an OR gate this way, I need a relay that can repeat each input signal, so the actual inputs don't get their wires crossed. If we look back at the AND gate, we can see that because the armature on the A relay is connected to constant power, the normally open terminal works as a repeater. If A is off, the normally open terminal will be off, and if A is on, the terminal will be on. But the armature on the B relay is not connected to constant power. It only receives power when A is turned on, so B does not have a repeater. The situation is similar with the XOR gate. The normally open terminal on A acts as a repeater, but on B the terminals are used as inputs and the armature gives us the XOR output. We can deal with this by being a little clever and designing a new AND gate that works in a slightly less obvious way. I'll connect A and B to individual relays as before, but I'll also connect B to the armature of A instead of a constant power source. That means that the normally open terminal of A will be connected to power only when both A and B are on, a single relay AND gate. That frees up the armature on B to allow it to be connected to constant power, providing a repeater for the B input. On the second pole, the XOR gate works exactly as before, and we can still tap off the normally open terminal on A to repeat the A signal. That gives us our two repeat signals, allowing us to make an OR gate. Here's my prototype for the logic block. The relay on the left implements the AND gate, and with the second relay, the XOR gate. The two relays on the right act as inverters, giving the NAND and XNOR outputs. The LEDs show the input state and the results. Here's my PCB design for the 4-bit logic block. Like the adder boards, this board is divided into four quadrants of four relays each. Each quadrant is responsible for computing the logic functions for one pair of input bits. Here, the A and B inputs are connected to the first two relays on the right. The B input is also connected to the armature on the A relay, forming the one relay AND gate. The normally open terminal on that pole is connected to the AND output, and also activates the third relay, which is set up as an inverter. The normally closed terminal there is connected to the NAND output. The inside poles of A and B relays have their normally open terminals wired together, creating the OR gate. Additionally, the left-hand poles form the XOR gate. 
the left-hand armature of the B relay is connected to the XOR output. It also activates the fourth relay, which is set up as an inverter. The normally closed terminal there is connected to the XNOR output. The left-hand normally closed terminal of the A relay, in addition to performing part of the XOR gate, also acts as an inverter for the A input and is connected to the NOT A output. Here's the Arduino code that I'll use to test the logic board. It works basically the same way as the test for the adder. Since there are four bits for each of the A and B inputs, there are eight total bits of input, making 256 total states to test. The loop counts from 0 to 255 and then writes the bits to the appropriate inputs on the adder board. Then other functions are called to test the results of each of the six board outputs. Those test functions read the output bits from the appropriate pins and compare the results to the same operation done in software. If any of them don't match, the error function is called, which stops the test.
Just like with the adder, I'll need to build a total of four boards in order to compute logic functions on 16 bits simultaneously. The next step is to build a multiplexer, but I'll save that for a future video. Until then, thanks for watching.